Okay, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, such good response for uh, this fireside. So we know this is a topic very, uh, very close to people's hearts at the moment. Wanting to know more. And um, thank you very much, everyone, su for submitting your question in advance. We have had a look at them. And uh, hopefully we should be able to answer um, a lot of them through the discussion that we've planned. So we're talking today on this fireside chat, the, uh, the hottest topic uh, that we've had so far. We've had uh, an amazing response to this, um, all around AI in accounting. And I'm joined by two very influential people uh, on this subject, um, very passionate about AI. Um, so we've got Jerry Williams from Smooth Accounting, and we've got Billy McLaughlin, hopefully I said that right, from uh, 2020 Innovation. Um, so, ladies, I don't know if you want to do a quick um, intro for yourselves. Do you want to go first, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, everybody. I'm Jerry Williams. I own an accounting practice called Smooth Accounting. We are in the UK and in the last couple of years have expanded into the UAE as well. And I also run an academy for accountants and bookkeepers, helping them grow their firms called the Accountants Wealth Academy. And more recently, Smooth AI, which I have on my hoodie, uh, which is a membership helping business owners to implement AI in their businesses and learn how to use it. Hi everybody, so I'm Billy McLaughlin. I am a uh, accountant and a, a practice consultant at 2020. So I was in practice for uh, just over 12 years before deciding to kind of hop over to the side of fence and help accountants with their growth strategies, which generally leads down the path of digital technologies uh, and of recent, maybe the last two years, AI. So uh, it's something that I'm super nerdy on, very much enjoy talking about it. So I'm really looking forward to this session. Great. Thank you very much, both of you. Um, so just to let everybody know how we're going to break this down. So we have prepared um, some content in advance. So we're going to be specifically looking at current state of AI to give you some idea of where where things are sitting at the moment. Uh, we're going to talk about the opportunities of AI. We're going to talk about the challenges. And we're also going to talk about what the future looks like as well. So before I get started with our first question to the panel, I'm, panel, I'm going to uh, launch a quick poll just to temperature check where you, our audience, are with AI. So if you wouldn't mind just submitting um, in the background, and then that will give us a nice idea of where you're at with AI. Um, so whilst that's happening, I'm going to kick off. So firstly, we're going to look at the current state of AI. Um, so I'm going to come to Jerry first. So how have you seen AI be integrated into accounting practices? Um, we had an awful lot of questions about, um, in particular, kind of small to medium firms. So um, it'd be great to get some insight from you on what you're seeing. Yeah, thanks. So I think we've seen it kind of quite rapidly come into play and you know or what feels like very rapidly you know it was like not so long ago that people just every now and then mentioned AI and people weren't really sure that meant and how do we use it what do we use it for and stuff and then all of a sudden it now feels like we're seeing it every day all day every day and it's it's becoming part of our day our daily work our daily life um certainly for me personally using it you know just all the time and with Smooth as well, we've always been a digital firm. We've always been a kind of tech driven practice from day one when I started the practice when I was just on my own. You know, I was very keen to to always be looking at advancements, efficiencies, things like that. And I see that AI now is just another element of that. You know, like we all saw it with cloud accounting when that came in and, you know, everyone kind of had to get on board with that. We've got Make Tax Digital coming in. AI is just another layer. Um, and I think that it's so important that practice owners kind of like are open to it and, you know, aren't scared of it and, and are open to embracing it and embracing change and kind of getting on board with it because it's only going to kind of just expand further. It's only going to become more prevalent in everything we're doing. It's not going to go away. So you almost just can't bury your head in the sand. Yeah, thank you. And um, I know we've spoken before about the importance of mindset in adopting AI. So what do you feel is most important to facilitate that shift? 
I think, I mean, and we've seen it as well, you know, amongst team members that are like just absolutely no about AI, like scared that it's going to replace them, it's going to take their jobs. And it's really just about educating them and communicating with your team about the fact that it's quite the opposite, actually. Like, if you get on board with this and you embrace it, it's going to make you better at your job. You know, the whole point of it is that it's taking away the mundane repetitive tasks that you don't need to be doing to enable you to focus on the human element of what you're doing and what we all want to be doing with our clients, right? None of us want to be sat there doing monotonous, repetitive tasks that have no substance. We want to be advising our clients and helping them. And AI is a way of enabling us to do that even better, even more. So I think kind of, any practice owners or staff that are feeling scared about it, you know, you, you almost need to think of the positives, focus on the positives on what you can achieve from getting on board with it. Because I think it's one of those things and I'm, I'm not um, very tech minded myself, although I love tech, I absolutely love what it's capable of doing. I'm not very clever with tech, but I have people that are, and you know, that's, that's why I employ these people because they're much better at me at tech, but I want to be using it. I'm, I encourage our team to use it. And we've just seen a kind of change now in their mindset around it, because now they're seeing what it's enabling them to do and what we're capable of with using it um, and the time it's saving. So, you know, I think it's just, it's just having open communication and, and education, I think with your team and yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Julie, have you got anything to add to that? Yeah, I, I really like the the sort of intro going straight into the mindset because what we find is there's firms that kind of rule with an iron fist and say, you now have to start doing this. People are reluctant. They're reading it in the press that we are one of the top professions that are going to get replaced. I, I don't blame people for being worried. Um, but what we're seeing is those firms that go in with a, a gentle nudge of we'd like you to try this the team members see how helpful that particular AI software is and they are creating this culture of um, intent as well so they're kind of saying right we would like to help you free up two hours a week and with that we would like you to then develop your advisory knowledge develop your client managing skills whatever it may be um, so those, those firms that are adopting this slowly are actually going to be able to retain the team better not put people off uh, and and introduce it in a really nice way and to echo what jerry said at, at the end of the day when we were all training i mean this this never existed when we were studying we didn't get into the accountancy profession to do monotonous tasks we got into it because we loved the idea of getting behind the numbers and understanding our clients business and helping the clients and so it's great that actually over time we've got something that can take us back to that initial reason why we became accountants in the first place yeah absolutely um so staying with you billy um from what you've seen what are the most common ai technologies that you're seeing accountancy firms getting into as a starter Okay, so pens at the ready because I will just fire loads of like software out here. But when I say about the gentle nudge, uh, we're seeing a lot of firms implement note takers. So uh, Fireflies is the one that I use personally. It's like $8 a month and it transcribes all your meetings. The reason why we're seeing people really see the benefit of this is because when you go back to practice, you've got the partners meeting with the clients and then they are the bottleneck of information to deliver it back to the client manager. Whereas if they can share the transcript from the meeting and the client manager can search within that transcript, they can read how the meeting went. Maybe there was a new addition uh, in the year and they can't quite remember if it's if it's going to be eligible for uh, super deductions. They need to know when they bought it, for example. They can do the searches within the transcript for keywords, etc. Um, so note takers are great. You, you know, Fireflies is the one I use, but you do have others. Um, Otter, Meet, Record uh, are other popular ones. Um, and then we're also seeing a really big introduction into AI chatbots. And there's, there's two main ways you can use these. Um, but what we really see is people ring fencing their data. So um, we've got a fantastic member, uh, Matt Jones at LWA, who uses these. Uh, he uses an application called Chat Thing. Again, I think it's maybe $20 a month and he gets three chatbots. He uses one where 
it can look through their employee handbook. So if they get new starters, they can search the handbook, which is really handy. I think they had a new girl and she needed to know where the extra toilet roll was and she didn't want to ask anybody in the office. But it was great because she could ask the chatbot and it would it would tell her from the, the client handbook, you know, do we have to pay for tea and coffee, etc. cetera. Um, they have another one which is for software support. So every time they get asked a question in their firm about how do I do a bank reconciliation on a certain software, they you know, could um, put the answer to that into the back end of this chatbot. And then next time somebody asks it, they could just ask this chatbot. Um, and then they had another one for trainees in the practice as well, which was great. So in terms of starting off in AI I do think you know you'll hear a lot of people talk about chat GPT using that for blogs uh, and, and things which is great but what we're seeing is people kind of going off that a little bit because of the risk of hallucinations and using the likes of fireflies and note takers and chatbots as well because that gives the team that confidence to then move on to more uh, elaborate language models. Yeah, thank you Billy and Jerry, what have you found to be the most useful AI tools? Um, yeah, it was funny when when we first started talking about AI. I remember thinking like, oh, we just don't we don't use it, and I can't even think what we would use it for and stuff. And then I started thinking, I was like, actually, we do use it. <laughs> I don't, I hadn't really even thought about that because, like, you know, for example, invoice capture, right? That's has elements of AI in it, and most accountancy firms are using some kind of invoice capture software. Um, which is great. Note takers, like Billy said, we use Read AI. Um, that's been a game changer for us because you can be much more present on the call when you're not sat there trying to take notes. Um, and then you can use it for so many things. So, so many things, you know, it, it, it's not just the fact that you're recording the call and getting a transcript from it. Um, you know, Read AI coaches you on how to be a better speaker when you're having calls, tells you where you're going wrong, tells you when, that you're interrupting people, you're talking too fast. You know, you, you can take it so much further. Um, we use a bot that does um, some reconciliation stuff on zero for us. We've been using that for quite some time. Um, we use ChatGPT Teams version. And the reason we use Teams is just the added layer of security and data privacy that it gives, um, rather than just allowing our team to use G chat GPT, for example. Um, we use Grammarly, uh, which is a great tool for helping us rewrite um, emails and things, certainly where we've expanded internationally and we have people where English is not necessarily their first language. That's really useful. Um, there's, yeah, there's loads of loads of different ways that we're using it. I mean, ChatGPT, I use it all day, every day. Like, I cannot remember a time where I would have done these things manually. Like, it blows my mind that like, I would have spent time doing things that ChatGPT does for me now. Um, and the good thing about using Teams and getting our employees using Teams is being able to share our GPTs with each other um, and, and kind of knowledge sharing as well and doing it in a secure way. Yeah, it's really interesting. And I, I've definitely been trying to utilise ChatGBT just as a, a start. Uh, so you're not starting from a blank page. You know what you want to, to get out of it, but sometimes it's easier to, um, to to have something to work with and edit. And obviously I I would never just, you know, download what it gives you and put that out there. It definitely needs the human intervention to double check that. So just from a marketeering uh, per point of view I, I found it very useful in what I'm doing um, so thank you very much for those so I'm going to switch into the opportunities so we've, we've looked at what what is out there but um, Jerry if I can stay with you how do you see AI enhancing data analytics to improve things like business planning reporting and forecasting I think it's just the the, firstly, the time element of being able to deliver these kind of advisory services, you know, that that is the thing that you want to be spending your time on, but don't always get to as much as you would like because you're kind of bogged down in the other thing. So it's the fact that you will have more time naturally to focus on these, but then using AI to enhance that deliverable as well. So, you know, in the past, if you were going to write, I don't know, a business plan, for example, for a client, you know, you might have a template or something, but you're sat there manually doing it. Now you can do one, you know, within seconds, I needed to do a business plan for opening a bank account for a new business that I had started. This was maybe like a year ago. 
And, you know, I'm like on to chat GPT again, this is what my business does. This is what we don't like, can I have a business plan done, upload to the bank, bank account opened. Like, but if I hadn't been able to do that, and I know this is me talking on a personal level, how I've used it, but it, it's the same when it comes to clients and things like that. If I hadn't been able to do that, the thought alone of having to sit and write a business plan would have like pushed me over the edge. I'd have been like, I do absolutely not what even want the bank account that bad. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, I'll just give up on this business idea because I don't want to do. Like, that's actually how I would have felt about it. Um, and the same with clients when you're delivering services. Like, you can you can plug reports now. And, and it will find things and see things that you may not have seen just with the human eye. You may not even have realized, you know, the best accountants out there, we can't see everything. We can't foresee everything. So it's going to mean that you're able to notice things and notice opportunities, notice problems, you know, give your clients more of an insight than you would have been able to previously because a you wouldn't have had the time and b that we're only capable of so much as a human you know so it's it's just going to give us so much more opportunity now to help our clients and i just love that side of it it's so exciting yeah billy what, what do you think of that yeah so in terms of data analytics um obviously anonymize the data and i'm sure we'll come on to the safety in a moment um i've seen use cases where you can you know, copy and paste large data sets into it and ask to find any anomalies that as a human, we can quite easily miss because AI, if, if you don't know, like it's trained on huge amounts of data to recognize patterns. So if something does not look right. It can spark that for you. I've, I've tried and tested this with um, a large volume of bank transactions and maybe put a couple of dates that don't really match the same year or maybe one transaction that is wildly out of the the range of the rest and it will pick those up maybe even a credit card that doesn't match the rest of the payments for example um and then the other thing that i really like and i've seen this on a few things now is is, is sample collection for audits um and the reason i really like this is because as a trainee auditor it's very easy to want to pick a sample that's in the file that's next to you and not the one that's in the shed down the garden for the client or wherever it may be hiding so to get truly non-biased samples, you can use artificial intelligence to collect that from, again, large data samples. Um, and, and what this allows as well is it allows us to then do the analytics on a lot more data a lot quicker than we could have done as a human. Because for us to manually check the 50 transactions post year end, it's a lot, lot quicker for artificial intelligence to do that and pick out the two or three that look erroneous, which is all we would do as a human anyway but we just don't have to do the analytic part before. So there's some really, really exciting use cases in that sense. Um, and again, you know, it's um, there's a, a really great product on the market that I, I don't know if people are aware of called Expert, and they are built purely on AI and they are designed for this reason. So it can identify, and you know, one really great use case for this is when you're running payroll, if, for example, one of um, your supplier bank payments is to the same account as one of your payroll payments it will notify you to help prevent fraud so there's so many use cases and there's now products coming to market that can do this specifically which i love because for those that are a little bit more cautious and don't really want to embark on this themselves want to rely on the likes of the software they're already using to introduce it then that's happening as well so it's really great because i feel like everybody can have a go even if they're a little bit more risk averse yeah thank you for that um, and sticking with you, Billy, um, in what ways does AI automation help to reduce human error and increase efficiency in routine accounting tasks? Um, so similarly to what um, I've just said in terms of the fact that it can identify uh, anomalies quite easily because uh, it's trained on the patterns. Um, and then in terms of efficiencies, again, you know, asking it to um create so for example the amount of times i'd be sat in an office and i'd be on an excel spreadsheet and i'd be trying to create some if formula or a lookup formula and i would be like i just want it to do this this and this and i would explain it in human terms to my colleagues and like have a little moan about it well actually now we can use whether it's chat gpt or whether you're using microsoft copilot you can use that in a normal language way so just as i would pop my head over the monitor and complain to have colleagues I just want it to I can now say to it and type out I just want you to find x y and z in this column blah 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 and it will create the formula for me so I think unfortunately for the excel geeks out there we are in a 
a new state where trainees no longer need to know how to learn how to do a formula. It's just not needed um, because we can ask these large language models to do it for us. Or if you're using Excel, as I said, Copilot's in there, Python's in there. So I think that's going to create a lot of efficiencies. And because of that, again, uh, when you're looking at OpenAI, it can create images and graphs and charts for you now. So it, we're not having to, to do that. We're not having to spend, I love what Jerry was just saying then about sometimes you think, do you know what? I'm not going to bother because these things take too long. And I think it's very similar when you get to that stage when you're trying to do fancy things, which we're not trained to do. We didn't get into accounting to make a pie chart, but if we can just ask something to do it in a very English way, then yeah, all good. Yeah, thank you. And um, Jerry, was there any other efficiency gains that you've seen? Oh, do you know what? There's just so many. I mean, like we, for example, a, a main um, kind of product, if you like, that we offer because we've expanded internationally is tax reports. So we offer tax reports for people that want to become non-resident from the UK or, or are moving abroad and need to understand their tax responsibilities. Um, it's complex, you know, you're talking about a statutory residency test, there's loads of elements to it. And we were doing those manually. And again, although we had a bit of a template, everybody's situation is different, which is why these reports are quite um, time consuming. They're quite long winded. They take us long to do. We have to get a lot of information, go through it all. And we're advising people on quite complex things. And although we're still going through the same process, that process is now a more accurate in terms of the language and the punctuation and the grammar but also now it's taking us less time because what used to happen is someone's reading through that and although you can use spell check we've all had spell check for years right it's not the same as going can you just read can you say into like chat gpt can you just read this report and just make sure it doesn't sound weird because you might have doubled up on a word you know if you write and and spell check is not going to tell you that right so it's just like does it read right are there any bits in there that maybe you think, and again, like Billy said, talking to it like it's a normal human, like, are there any bits in here that you think we may have, maybe um, the client might misunderstand? Have we explained ourselves properly? Do we need to change the language at all? Do we need to make it more understandable? Because we're talking about a really complex area of tax. And I'm sure loads of people that are on the call today are advising their clients on complex matters, but you want to explain it in in normal language that your clients are going to understand. So it, for us, it's taken this tax report, which is just one example of how we use it. And we're now saying, right, can you just check this sounds okay? Is any of it, you know, maybe misleading? And, and ChatGPT is going to come back and go, this sentence doesn't quite make sense how you've read this. You've duplicated the same sentence twice here and here. You know, you've, you've maybe contradicted yourself. And we will then look at these bullet points and be like, right, okay, no, I see what you mean. And go through and just double check. But a human you know what it's like you look at something long enough and we all do this in practice we're looking at stuff long and long enough and you're literally just like i can't read this anymore like mm -hmm. and there may well be mistakes in it little you know not mistakes in terms of the advice you're giving but it's just making it so that process for us now so much better um so that's just one example of how we use it but the bot like i said we have bots that are, are uh, reconciling on zero so all through the night you know, where I would have a member of the team sat there going click, 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 where we've got thousands of transactions on zero. And as long as it's something where you can say, if it says this, do this, then you can get the bot to go, if it says this, do this. I don't need to pay a human being to do that. I want my humans that I employ spending their time doing better things and things that they actually need to be doing and using their brains. So again, that's another example. Um, I've got millions, but I'll <laughs> stop talking now. But yeah, I get excited about it. But there's, yeah, there's loads of ways that it can improve your efficiencies. Yeah, lovely. And that, that kind of takes us quite nicely into the next question that we've got here about if you're not having to waste time on that stuff, it opens up the opportunity to deliver new advisory services. Um, so what what have you kind of seen uh, that turn into? So what services can accountants kind of look to offer based off of AI driven insights? Sorry, who, which one of us? Uh, Jerry, if you want oh, to. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's, it's going to enable all um, accountants and, and other businesses to be able to offer services that maybe we've not really been able to, we've wanted to, but um, I don't know about anybody else, but we are busy all the time in my firm. Like everyone that works for me is flat out busy. You know, it's not like anyone sat around twiddling their thumbs. So anything I can do to give them that a little bit more time 
and encourage them to come up with ways of helping clients you know it's going to make us better as a firm it's not about me dictating and going right now we're going to do this now we're going to offer this it's like okay if you've got a bit more time on your hands how could you help this client what ideas could we come up with as, as a practice you know in collaborating and also it's not just to answer your question not just about the additional services that we can offer it's about the additional training and upskilling that we can now offer our team members. You know, we, we quite often talk about a customer focused approach, client led approach, but actually before you even get to that, if you look at your team and you look internally, how can you help your team members? It's going to help you recruit. It's going to help you retain staff. It's going to help you improve your um, culture, your team happiness. And then naturally you're going to improve the, the services you're delivering to clients. So I think, Yes, loads of different value adds that you can do in terms of advisory, and that can take many different forms. And there'll be lots of people in different niches that can offer lots of different things, but but also looking internally and in how you can upskill and train your staff now that you've got more time and better tools to be able to do it. Yeah, Billy, if I can come to you um, just to add to that from your experience as well, what are you seeing in the industry? Yeah, absolutely. So what we need to remember is, and I always say this, uh, you said what, just software in general when people say oh my clients won't use digital anything and we have to remember that you know as accountancy in accountancy in the industry we're actually in competition with every other industry because our clients are used to receiving things instantly so they're used to ordering something on amazon getting it the next day wanting to watch something on netflix i actually read that netflix this is completely going off tangent but i read this this morning netflix um in terms of what people are watching on there 80 percent of it is driven by ai recommendations wow. so only 20 percent of people are actually choosing what they watch by the search function which just shows that this ai and these you know i, I have on spotify it knows what i need to what i want to listen to it's it's so crazy so I think when we've got these other industries and that's the way our clients are used to consuming data and everything else, we need to make sure that we're on the same page because when it comes to client services, not being worried, I think you'd be surprised how many clients will actually come back at you and say, could you help me in my business implement AI? And I think that's, a, you know, when we talk about um, zero, QuickBooks, Edge, whatever it may be, we ended up getting into this realm of like, well, we don't want to be software support. Like we want to help the clients of accountancy, but we don't want to help them with software support, which I totally understand. And I think a lot of practices are going to be worried that we end up falling down this route with AI and therefore not offer it to their clients. But if you're already offering it and you can give your client these insights, some of the great ones that Jerry has said today, um, you know, if, if, she's in a meeting with the client and she's got the note taker on and the client says, what's that? And you say, you need this in your business that's such great service, such great added value to your clients that they don't have to pay for, but that extra advice is really, really valuable. Um, and as I think Jerry uh, mentioned niches, one thing I have seen and, and the hours and hours of YouTube that I've watched on AI is um, that if you are looking to niche using the likes of a large language model, which is ChatGPT is a large language model, just like Google is a search engine. So if you use a large language model to help you with that and say, look, I want to get into the niche of tree cutters. Could you tell me 10 problems tree cutters have as a business? And then that can give you these ideas to help you, not just with the marketing side of things, but maybe before you go into a discovery meeting with a potential new client, you already feel like you don't have to read all the tree cutter magazines, which is what we used to have to do. We used to have loads of farmers. I used to have to read Farmers Weekly. So when I rang up, you know, one of the farmers, I could have a conversation about the weather. Um, and so it, having these large language models just means that you only have to spend five minutes pre-meeting thinking, right, okay, these are the challenges they face. I'm going to go into this meeting on the front foot, not the back foot, even though it's not a client we normally deal with. So, um, yeah, I think in terms of client services, as Jerry said, added value can be completely different to every firm. And so I'm sure there's one in the forefront of your mind that you've been wanting to do for a while and hopefully using AI can give you the efficiencies to do so. But also just think about the satisfaction of your team and your clients when you are delivering much more efficiently. Yeah, thank you. Those are really excellent points. Um, so lots of opportunity and we haven't got time to go through every single uh, point of that. Um, but you know, if there's anything that's really kind of stuck out to you, pop it in the chat. We'd love to get some feedback on that. 
Um, so moving more into challenges, because there is some um, hesitation, um, trepidation about uh, implementing AI. So um, Billy, if I can stay with you for this one, um, we had a lot of questions about the ethical side of this. So what do you think are the primary considerations that accountants need to keep in mind when they're thinking about implementing AI? Um, okay, so I usually avoid this idea of talking, so I always think it's the boring bit, but as accountants, I find that everybody wants to talk about it, which is totally understandable. So I've had to really like get myself up to speed with this. Um, in terms of security, uh, Jerry's given a really good point. Make sure that you know if you're using a free product, it's probably because you are the product and they're going to be taking all your data and God knows where it's going. So using Teams GPT is the enterprise level of security, which is fantastic. It's, it's very similar to sort of Microsoft security. So making sure that you know the security that's behind uh, the products that you're using is definitely um, up there. Um, and then the other things I would say is um, in terms of data that you're putting into these models, um, I, I would categorize this as three different types of data. So you kind of have like general data. So what I just said, if you said, give me 10 ideas I can discuss of a tree surgeon about his business. That's very general. It doesn't matter if it goes anywhere. You've then got um, redactive or anonymized data. So potentially something from a client that you can anonymize. So um, maybe it's an email that you want to respond to. You can copy and paste that into ChatGPT, but make sure you've anonymized it. And then there's highly sensitive data. So obviously bank statements and things like that. So I would never put anything that is of the confidential data into any large language model. Uh, and the reason for this is although if you look at some of the uh, security behind the likes of OpenAI, it does claim to redact sensitive information. So if you accidentally put a national insurance in there, uh, number in there, it does say that it would get rid of it and, and not keep it. But how do we know? <laughs> like, I, I love everything to do with the technology, but even I am a little bit cynical about that. The redactive stuff, I would have a policy in place so your team members know what to and what not to put in. Um, so, for example, anything that can identify the client, make sure that's taken out or change some names around, etc. And then general can go in. So in terms of the ethical considerations, I think training your team to understand what can go right but also what can go wrong you know we know that some of these large language models can hallucinate uh, they can give incorrect information can we potentially ring fence the information that the ai system that we're using is pulling the information from can we make sure it's not got access to the open internet maybe it's just got access to our information and having an ai policy in place i think is imperative now in this day and age so and um, we have these for all of our 2020 members that they can white label and use in their practice. And it has two parts to it. So the first part is if you're to go out and search for a software yourself. And the second is if you were to use, for example, Sage has Sage Copilot in it. If you were to go out and use that, how and under what circumstance. Um, we've seen the ICAW release some reports on this as well. And they're saying that basically they need you to be transparent going forward to say when something is produced or created or had artificial intelligence input. And this is just for the transparency. Um, my final point, I just want to point this out just because it's something I've been doing research on recently, is the only thing that I can see that is really lagging behind here is insurance. So in terms of insurance for your practice, I'm yet to speak to a member who's had a decent conversation with their insurer to say, where do we stand? What, what uh, includes in in our insurance what doesn't what isn't included that type of thing so that's the only thing that I think is lagging behind so I would recommend if you do have insurance please don't go and speak to them and try and get an answer and feed it back to me because I'm curious to know what what would constitute as um, being insured and not so hopefully that was uh, helpful <laughs> yeah thank you Billy and um, Jerry if I can come to you and um, just kind of building what uh, Billy building on what Billy has already said um, what measures are you putting into place to ensure security and um, addressing privacy concerns in, in smooth accounting? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, 
It's been really useful for us, actually, because in Smooth AI, one of the um, members or one of the owners of Smooth AI is a data protection officer and GDPR expert. So he is all over this stuff, which is why we brought him in, because we didn't want to be advising on AI, uses of AI without doing it in a a responsible manner. So it's been really interesting to learn so much about that side of it. And not, you know, for people not to be afraid to use it, but also understand how to use it safely. And I think that's really important. So a few things that we've done, you know, update our data privacy policy um, is important. But but a, a, a really good one is actually our team, our employees have all had to sign a data usage policy um, which we give the template away as part of, in, in Smooth AI. Um, and everyone's had to sign that to say how they're using it, how they're using AI and how they're being responsible with it, because it's all well and good giving your team access to AI or, or encouraging them to use it. But you obviously need to do that in a, in a responsible way and make sure that they understand that they can't just be uploading sensitive data and things like that. So getting the team to understand how to use it and to sign a usage policy is really important um the other thing i think uh, which has been really interesting through through doing uh, starting smooth ai and, and reviewing different products is um our data protection officer reviewing software and seeing what different software do with their data and that's been really interesting because like for example read ai we use for our note takers i mentioned earlier we reviewed three of the kind of main ones uh, from a data security point of view. And it was really interesting how a lot of people are using a certain product that our data protection officer was like, absolutely not. Like it's really, and you just wouldn't know that, but we only know that because he's done loads of research and kind of gone through it. So we were like, wow, that's really interesting that maybe people wouldn't realize or even know where to look. So we're kind of educating people on if you're going to use software, where should you be looking in terms of trying to understand what they're doing with data and how kind of responsible and ethical they're being? Um, because you want to know that, right, before you start using a, a piece of software. So, so for us, I think it's the team making sure they know what what they should and shouldn't be doing and that they're signing something to kind of agree to that. Um, data privacy uh, policy and in terms of what we're letting our clients know that we're doing. And, and I think someone mentioned earlier in the chat or I saw it pop up about, um, you know, what about people that are reluctant to be recorded with note takers and things like that. Everyone has to agree to that before we start a call. So if anyone books a call in, it's one of the requirements. You can't book a call until you've agreed that you're going to be recorded and that we're going to use that information for training and quality and monitoring purposes. Um, so that's really important. And then making sure that any software you're using, your third party software, that you're doing your, your due diligence on what that particular software is, is doing with your data. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I think you've kind of touched on it a little bit uh, previously, but we had quite a lot of questions in advance about, um, you know, people worried about um, the impact of AI on recruitment and um, skills um, and onboarding. So um, how do you think the accounting industry can address the skills gap in training of accountants to work effectively alongside AI? Um, I think that it all starts kind of at the recruitment stage, I guess, you know, it depends who you're recruiting and what role they're going to be doing. Um, and depending on that and, and also what, what their interests are, you know, I know we found it with cloud accounting as well. You had some people that were really on board and really interested in cloud and therefore you push them down that that kind of avenue of like exploring that and how we could adapt it and all that kind of stuff. I think it's the same with AI. You're not necessarily going to convince everybody that this is the best thing and, and how great it is. But I think that it all comes down to having open communication, starting at the recruitment phase, being open. You know, we've just recruited someone recently and we talked about AI in the interview process you know we we're really keen to adopt ai as much as possible we already use it quite a bit here's the ways we use it we're looking to use it more and more your role will involve the use of ai and how we can better implement it and safely um so it's you know before we've even taken someone on we, we're already having those conversations so i think it's about bringing it in 
to those those early conversations in the recruitment phase and then with your existing team we're really encouraging our team to come to us with ideas you know it's not the other way around we're not dictating this is what we should be doing shouldn't be doing um of course we are dictating on a on a safety level on a data protection level but we're not when it comes to creativity you know it's part of smooth's values that we are collaborative and that we're tech driven and you know that we want the team to come to us and they're better they're the ones doing the work every day right so they're the ones that are going to have these ideas and we've already had them come to us and go could we do this you know we've noticed that the dex has a feature where it can enter the description in to all of the invoices for invoice capture and things rather than someone typing it in and we don't want invoices being uploaded to cloud software with just a full stop or nothing in the description because then you're having to click onto the invoice. I'm sure loads of people watching this are going to be like, yes, this is very annoying. You know, just little things like that. And, and actually, oh, Dex can do that for us. So can we get in touch with them? How do we add that feature? And, you know, just they're, they're doing the work all day, every day. So they are best placed to find ways of bringing AI in. So you've got to encourage them to want to do it rather than, if you are a practice owner and you feel scared and nervous about AI, then that's going to filter down to your team, you know, so you've got to lead by example and kind of give them the encouragement um, and the confidence to, to start exploring what, what it can do and how it can help practice. Yeah. Thank you, Jerry. And Billy, if I can uh, build on that with um, what are you kind of seeing and hearing about, um, you know, onboarding, filling the skills gap, and addressing some of those concerns yeah i mean i have to say even myself personally I see, I, it is concerning I, if i was you know back at school choosing my profession and i would read everywhere that by the time i qualified there'd be no accountants left anyway I, it's not a profession i would get into so i think what we need to do is at that recruitment stage we need to be open and honest with new members of the team that we are developing our skills in AI. So rather than it being the jobs are going to get replaced, it's more we want you to work alongside artificial intelligence. And when you think about this, um, you, you know, I'm saying younger members of the team, they could be any age, but the people that are just getting into the profession, they've got the choice to go and, you know, work in a tech business. I know they could go work in Silicon Valley. Like, why are they going to choose to work at an accountant? Well, I think we're in such a unique spot where we get to do all the human stuff that we love to do. We get to be, you know, friends of our clients, buddy counselors for our clients. You know, we, we've been there through all of it with them, but then also we get to do the tech side as well. So I think we're really uniquely placed, but what we need to do is we need to make sure that we are communicating that with our team as they come on board and the ones that are in the team at the moment, and, and as I say, you know, new recruits, we explain that we want to develop those softer skills. So um, I think Forbes have recently released a list of um, all the soft skills that are going to be needed in the new digital era. And things like empathy and emotional intelligence are actually what uh, are going to set people apart. And yes, it would be great if we could get someone on board that could read a bit of code or something, but it's not essential anymore. We don't necessarily need, we just need open mindedness and things like that. So there's a lot of soft skills that I think people get so bogged down in the detail of technology that they forget that having a nice culture and people that are kind to each other is actually probably up there as more important than the digital skills. As long as that person's willing to learn, that's great but they have to be a good person. So hopefully I see a shift where the culture is actually front and foremost and the digital skills come second because they're quite easy to teach, whereas the softer skills are much difficult, much more difficult to teach, as is my English, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, that's fantastic insight into some of the challenges that we've been asked about in the Q&A. Um, so I want to move in, because time's ticking on, I want to move into what we think the future is going to be shaping up to be. So Jerry, if I can come to you first, in your opinion, how do you see AI reshaping the structure and maybe the operation of accounting firms in the next five to 10 years? I mean, what, what are you thinking it's going to uh, turn into? I think that it's probably not going to be 
what any of us think it's going to be because I don't think we really know. And I think that's, you no, know, none of us knew we'd be here. You know, if you'd asked any of us like a couple of years ago, how much AI we'd be using in our firms, you know, I'd have been like, I don't even know what, like, what that is, you know, and now I'm like, oh, I use it in all these different ways. So I think it, I'm unsure it is honestly what, what I think about how it's going to go. But what I can say is that it's going to, transform our lives definitely in some ways personal level and business level right so it's you have to link the two because it's not just about how we're using it in our businesses we're using it in our everyday lives so because we're using it in our everyday lives we're saving time and improving other things we're doing in our everyday lives which means we've then got more time maybe to spend on business things that we didn't have before um you know so they, they are definitely linked and i just think it's going to be transformative how exactly that's going to look i am excited to see um i'm definitely going to be riding the wave um i would like to think that people will maybe qualify and become not necessarily qualify in terms of qualifications but in terms of their abilities quicker i think training will access to training will be easier and uh, more people hopefully will come into the profession because of that i don't see it going the other way i think more people will want to come into this profession because of how much we're using ai and, and what that means um and i think that potentially firms will start having different roles they don't currently have within the firms you know you're going to have maybe ai specialists like we had like our cloud accounting specialists you're going to bring people on that are more tech savvy maybe and want to really push the ai side of it you know i definitely look at my firms and think could i see myself hiring someone whose job is just to uh you know just deal with ai and make us better at it in in every way possible and i definitely think that's pos that that's something in our future so i don't know exactly what the future looks like but i am excited about it um and i'm definitely going to be there kind of ringing the ai bell <laughs> every day uh where possible and hopefully as a result of things like these webinars you know more people will feel like comfortable and, and wanting to explore it as well yeah, I think we all wish we had a crystal ball that we could look into. Um, mm -hmm. if, I, if I can come to you, have you got anything else to add to what? What do you see the future looking like? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting what Joey just said about um, an AI specialist, because I've had one of our members actually contact me and say, we are recruiting an AI only specialist for our firm. And like, could I recommend anybody? Is there anybody out there that is... <laughs> a up to it and, and they said you know the directors know we need to do it but they don't want to be involved so that's always a good thing um but i think in terms of the future it is it is very very unknown um elon musk has put a chip in some guy's head so that he can control a computer mouse um i don't think the whole professional will get there but i always just like to scare the hell out of people towards the end of a session um, <laughs> but i do see uh AI agents being a huge part of our industry. So an agent is essentially an AI. It's a bit like a bot and it'll just do the tasks for you. Um, and I do see it doing some of these monotonous tasks. Um, I can see them being built to do confirmation statements, for example, where we maybe just direct it somewhere and say, if there are no changes, can you go and file it, etc. So I do see some AI agents coming into the profession probably within the next 12 to 24 months quite heavily. Um, but other than that, I think we do need to just be, you know, ready to get started. We need to be seen as being progressive. We don't need to use it in every element of our business. That's okay. But we do need our clients to be aware that, you know, the new iPhone 16 got announced yesterday. It's got AI in it. So our clients are going to have artificial intelligence in the palm of their hands every single day. So when they speak to the accountant, they're going to expect an element of knowledge. So whether you direct that depending on the size of your team to one or two people in the practice or whether you upskill your whole team, that's totally unique to you and your firm. Um, but there is going to have to be a presence within every practice that wants to be progressive of some AI knowledge, I think. And that's, yeah. and that's, that's the short term future is, is what I'm talking about there. Yeah, no, thank you for that. Um, and Jerry, what strategies can small to medium sized firms adopt to remain competitive? because we're, we're talking that this is this isn't going away this is something that people do need to start um you know thinking about and integrating so what what would you kind of say to help firms kind of get started and remain competitive what are the key things for you 
I think that it starts with communication and that's, you know, a lot of practice owners are thinking these things in their heads and thinking, oh, I probably should get around to it or I should at least, you know, um, discuss it with other partners or things like that. But it's like you need to stop thinking and start doing, you know, start having conversations with your clients and your team. That's where it has to begin, right? Ask your team, where can we save time? What are people doing that we could potentially save time on? Look at all the monotonous tasks you're doing in your practice. Because I guarantee most of them you could like get AI to do for you or save a huge amount of time. Um, you know, confirmation statements is a great example of, of, like Billy said, of where that could go and what you could end up just pushing that away completely to, to a piece of software. Um, and so definitely start talking you know people are turning up onto webinars like this which is amazing the turnout that you've had today on today's webinar you know people want to do it so that's that's great (laughs) that's a starting point you know for small to medium-sized businesses you've got to want to do it if you're here on this webinar you clearly are interested and you want to know what you should be doing so there's loads of information out there you know billy mentioned earlier youtube and and trying to educate with that we're only doing the same things that you guys could do we're only educating ourselves and trying to learn having conversations watching webinars watching free resources researching you know we're doing all those things and doing it uh, getting our team to do it as well so it's it's out there the information is out there and available but it's it's like anything it's like anything in your practice you know when you first started hiring people or, you know, when you had to change maybe practice software and it was a whole big overhaul, like you have to start somewhere, right? These things don't just happen. So it's wanting to do it, having open communication with your team and your clients, researching, getting access to as much information out there as you possibly can, um, and just starting, start small, start small. You know, if you just start using something like Grammarly, for example, not necessarily that one specifically, but something that will help you write emails better or will pre-populate them for you. You know, so you're not sat there going, hi, how was your weekend? Yeah, I had a lovely weekend. Hope you did too. Like, hope the kids are well. Oh, by the way, about your accounts, da-da-da. Like, you know, you've just wasted like (laughs) two minutes typing that out. How many times a day do you do that? You know, like that is just something that we can just get rid of, right? So you can start small, something like Grammarly or or a note taker and and build from there. So yeah, those would be my, that that would be my advice for for small to medium sized practices to kind of get started. Yeah, thank you. And Billy, I I know you've got a ton of resources at the 2020, so is there anything you want to highlight as well? Yeah, I mean, we do have a lot of resources, which is great. And as Jerry said, we, at 2020, we I mean, I'm, I mainly do a lot of the AI uh, delivery. I read hours and hours. I watch hours and hours and I listen to hours and hours every single week. Um, and then the idea is that then we can put that into a really short, concise one hour webinar. Um, I do a Friday AI every Friday on LinkedIn, which is just a week's roundup of like the AI news, never more than five minutes. And that's a great place to start because it doesn't seem too consuming. You're just taking in five minutes of information. I try and keep it as relevant as I can to the accountancy industry, but obviously we do need to know what's going on in the wider world. Um, and it's a, it's a good way to just kind of get a little bit of knowledge because I think what, what you find is if people don't enjoy something or they're reluctant, try and get them to read a blog about it. It just, it just doesn't go in. You're just not interested. You don't want to do it. You put it off. So by just trying to find these bite-sized chunks, these summaries, um, and, and seek help, you know, that's what we're here for. And um, we're here to help out with doing that. We speak to a lot of accountants so we can crowdsource that information um, and, and bring it all together rather than you going out and doing it. And I know it's, it's difficult. I've just seen a question actually that's popped up from somebody, you know, about how if they're not using AI, it's very difficult to get started. Mm-hmm. So, you know, as Jerry said, just, just make that small step. You know, I would recommend probably starting with something like we've talked about note takers, et cetera, but um, using something like ChatGPT to write you a blog or an email. So you get a feel for it. Don't, you don't have to run in and suddenly have a full AI practice, a little bit like cloud. You know, we embarked on the cloud journey over a decade ago and how many practices are fully in the cloud? Not that many, but 10 years ago, we felt like everybody had to be there tomorrow. So you know, hopefully we won't have another global pandemic that makes us AI practices like we did for the cloud. But with AI, I think just just take bite-sized chunks and don't be frightened to ask for help. Like this is new to everybody. Even the experts have not been experts for very long. 
I think that's quite an important uh, message to get out there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there is a question from Alba that might be an interesting one to um, potentially finish on. So we've only got a few minutes left. Um, Alba's asked, what do you think about the balance of cost versus time saving that AI can provide? I think we have kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier on, but is there any any uh, anything else you guys can add to that? Um, she's also added, it seems like you use a lot of different software and for a company that starts from no AI, it could potentially be a big investment, potentially in like time and resource to get trained up um, and implement. I mean, I think you, you've both said that there's relatively low cost softwares out there. But it could potentially be quite a, you know, not a lengthy on, onboarding, but, you know, there's a lot of effort that might be required to get people up to speed on these things. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll just throw in just two bits here. And, and Jerry will probably have a bit more of an insight here because, you know, she's living this every day with her business. Um, in terms of um, cost, there are free AI software out there. As I said, you are the product, but use that for your general fact finding, which is great. Um, so, you know, ChatGPT 4.0 is free. Um, I hate the fact they've called it 4.0 because in a whole accent, saying 4.0 all the time just sounds so bad. <laughs> um, so 4.0 is a free version. And then the other thing I would say is we go back to the AI policies. Um, something that we have in ours is also about like almost like a fair usage policy within the practice because, yes, we can get a large language model to create as a journal. But if it's going to take us two minutes to do it or 15 minutes to figure out how to do it on a large language model, in some instances, that's better because that might mean that it can generate it for us in seconds going forward. So what we need to distinguish is, is it worth the time investment to figure that out to save us time going forward? Or are our team going down a rabbit hole spending two hours on something that they just did not need to spend two hours on? So to prevent kind of that, I say scope creep, but within your practice of people sort of figuring out these things, make sure that they understand what's expected of them in terms of going out and researching these policies and they're not spending a lot of client time figuring some of these things out. Yeah, thank you. And um, I'll pass it over to you then, Jerry. Yeah, I think it's a fair question, you know, and I think it's like, if you take even just AI out of the equation now, any software w which we invest in, we're always looking at a cost versus benefit, aren't we? And AI is just another example of that. So it's, it's got to have that benefit for you. I think that a really good place to start with these things is what am I wasting time on? Like break it down. Like it, it really is that simple. Like what today, like if you were to write a list of all the things you did and things that took you a really long time, you know, or or even something that maybe only took 10 minutes, but you did it quite a few times today. If you could take that away and you don't have to do it anymore, like how much time is that going to save you a day? How much is it going to save you a week? And then you can work out whether spending £15 a month on something that's going to save you an hour a week is worth it, right? Because what can you do with that hour? And it's not even necessarily about whether you can charge more or it's not even whether you saving an hour means you could be doing it on something that you can charge more money for and therefore earn more. You could be spending that with your family or you could be, you know, if it was me doing some gardening, like whatever, right? So, you know, it's it's it, the cost versus benefit is personal to you and your business because I could sit here and go, oh, it's absolutely worth £100 a month. You know, like you can do this, this is, and you might be thinking, well, actually, like it's not for me, you know, so, or, or something you might think is worth the money, we wouldn't necessarily need it or want to spend the money on. So take it right back to basics, look at what you're wasting time on, write a list and work out of those things you can automate using AI and then look for solutions and there will be some free ones. And like Billy mentioned, you know, ChatGPT 4.0 is is a free version and you can use it if you're not paying any data, sensitive data into it and things like that. So there are free options out there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Susan kind of made a point that we, we have touched on. Um, how comfortable are we in losing the skill sets that have been built up over many, many years? Uh, in a short of 10 years time, we could have a whole generation of accountants that don't have the skills and knowledge that we have today. Is there any plan in place for keeping the skill set and knowledge I, I think we have kind of touched on this and it's just bringing them along on the journey yeah I think and just to answer that you know I don't see it as taking the skills and knowledge away I see them I see this as making them better mm. I see it making us better accountants you know we're not talking about replacing skills and knowledge we're talking about replacing monotonous tasks that don't take any skill and knowledge 
they are an absolute waste of time you know so that's that's I think and and it's a really great question and probably something that I thought as well myself before I started getting more understanding of AI and how it could help me in my business and now I see how much time we're saving and how my team are becoming better at their jobs because of it so I do think it is a mindset thing having that thought that actually oh god we're going to take a lot of skills away you know absolutely something I probably thought and, and lots of people in this call thought and you just need to change your thinking around it and see how it can make you better not worse yeah absolutely um, right. Well, I think we, we're at time. So I'm going to I'm going to call it there. Thank you so much, Jerry and Billy, for joining. Uh, there's a lot of questions around what chatbots are being used and whatnot. So the recording will be shared with you because we spoke a lot about that um, during the beginning of the webinar. So if you missed out, you can recap on that. Um, we will send you the recording. Um, Billy, I think you mentioned there are a few resources that you could point people to. So we'll include yes. those as part of our follow up as well. So Thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate you spending an hour of your time. And thanks again, Jerry and Billy. Fantastic insights. Right. And I hope to do this again very soon. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.